We're gonna begin this video with just five minutes of silent awareness. So if you guys wanna just stick around, we're gonna give you some quality eye contact. And let everyone just simmer for a minute. What are we gaining awareness of? Doesn't matter. Literally doesn't matter. Well, Tana, we are just three days away from the launch of Taylor Swift's new album. How are you feeling about it? Oh, uh, pretty much uh, no feelings at all, but I'm wow. so excited for you. I know My this is- My best friend. <laughs> I'm so like excited for you. Like a knife to the heart. <laughs> I know that it's been a, a long time coming and just really gonna send you on a good chemical journey. Yeah, so. yeah, thank you, Tana. What's exciting in your life right now? What's coming up? What's oh, going on? I've um, been working on a music video for Psychic News coming out soon this month. It's gonna be just a fun, a fun little music video. Mm -hmm. Tana's so. partner it looks exactly like Tana. Fun fact, and that's really made for some great <laughs> content opportunities. We have the same hair. Yeah, and just like you know, a face that's meant for film, small, lithe limbs. Yeah, all you could hope for. That's that's enough for me <laughs> in, in terms of like duo. believing that people are twins. That's all it takes. <laughs> I mean, we told people we were twins for <laughs> they and didn't have half the credentials. <laughs> well, today we wanted to check in on Mormon TikTok. Because why not? On X Mormon TikTok, if you're on X Mormon TikTok, which I'm not that often, but every now and then one sneaks in from Mormon TikTok. And it's just a lot to process on your own. So I just thought I've been saving TikToks that I've been seeing that just, I think are just worthy of reaction. Or not worthy of reaction, but like, you know. We may just give a silent thumbs down. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, to raise awareness. <laughs> well, should we dive right in? Yeah. I'm Tanner. You know it's in my contract that I don't do intros. <laughs> Last one. Dare to be a Mormon. Dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose firm. Dare to make it known. Did he mean, was that a rhyming couplet? Yeah. Okay, that's cool. I'm gonna say right off the bat, the problem with this is he's using a highly offensive <laughs> slur. Mormon is actually oh, yeah. <laughs> a dead name for the Latter-day Saint movement. Wait, who's speaking? That's President Thomas S. Monson. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> dare not to be a Mormon is kind of the message these days. Uh, because he's Whatever saying, I mean, is. dare to stand alone, but it's like, come on, babe, this is your community, surely. Like, <laughs> I, you don't seem, as someone who has stood alone in a non-Mormon family and friendship group, I'm not, I mean, maybe he's some convert, but it's like, the, the chances are it's probably like, dare to continue doing the thing you've been raised in and that your entire community is doing. It's being well in a business so meeting where everyone is drinking alcohol, but you're drinking milk like a psychopath. <laughs> That's what being daring to be a Mormon is all about. I, Not a lot of commentary, yeah, just, so you know, an earnest <laughs> uh, pre-missionary, yeah. recently returned missionary. What we learn from this is being Mormon is reading your scriptures, tying a tie, and it's reading to be on alone. temple grounds. It's justifying a lack of friendships, I think. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not actually lonely, I'm just daring to stand alone. And I appreciate that kind of mental trickery. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta pull a fast one on your own psyche. <laughs> just think it's interesting when people in predominantly Mormon communities will be like, dare to be a Mormon. Mm. Okay, you ready for the next one? Yeah. Young people couldn't possibly be leaving the church in like flies because look how many people are sitting in this, in this room building. with me right now. Yeah. That's all the data I need. Oh yeah, studies be damned. Yeah. I've seen a room full of them. Also, do we put it above the LDH church to use seat fillers if they needed to? Because <laughs> I certainly don't. Alex sent me a, uh, a screenshot of like a Craigslist ad asking for actors to show up at a conservative rally. Oh, nice. And I'm like, this is what Liberty Adams is accused <laughs> yeah. Are you ready for the next one? Yes. Not a lot of points made, but um, things people don't understand about the LDS church is they don't practice polygamy, they are Christian. What was the other one? And um, they're not a cult. Two of them, highly debatable. The evangelicals don't want to believe that you're Christian because they 
like you believe that their religion is the one true religion and you're doing it the wrong way and you're like take you know you're not representing christ properly yeah. it's like that's what all you guys are doing so everyone thinks that ev- every christian seems to think that every other christian is not christian enough or <laughs> oh not yeah christian in the right way or like shouldn't even call themselves christian including myself i'm like i'm actually a better christian than most of y'all because <laughs> the stuff you go on about i am poor <laughs> <laughs> exactly you're not gonna see me going through an eye of a needle no sir <laughs> i wouldn't say that the mainstream opinion is that mormons are currently practicing polygamy that actually is a pretty big misconception. I, you, you know, think when you people still think that, I think they would still associate Mormon and Utah with polygamy. Which I mean, fair enough, because there are a ton of Mormon polygamists. Yeah, like the Mormon here. prophet <clears throat> who is sealed to do different women, as well as his successor, Dallin H. Jokes, who is likewise <laughs> sealed to two women and shall be with them both in the hereafter. And the Mormon prophet did say monogamy is no part of the economy of heaven. If polygamy was ever taken away from the church, the church would lose its priesthood. Multiple prophets taught that, right? So it's like, with all these things of like, what people don't get about us is like a series of asterisks. We don't do that <laughs> fucked up thing. We just had a church that was that way for like a hundred and something years, you know? And still does on some level. Yeah, yeah, still believes in that, like, women, you know, still believes in the same system in the afterlife. And yet you have Gordon B. Hinckley on Larry King Live saying uh-huh. he doesn't believe polygamy is doctrinal. It's the weird, like, we don't want to have a cake and we don't want to eat it too, mm-hmm. but we must also have a cake and eat it too. It's like the whole time polygamy was happening, you guys were saying it was from God and it was an eternal, unchanging doctrine. So what are we supposed to think? Oh, yeah, there was just that article in the Deseret News by a professor of Brigham Young University saying that uh, the courts are coming for monogamy and you may think that having polyamorous neighbors doesn't affect your relationship, but it actually does. And you're just how like, does it? Did he explain how? Oh, you know, it just, uh, it lowers the value. If everyone is buying into the idea of something and there's all these people who don't buy into the idea, it, it sort of lowers the mental value that everyone is placing on. It's like, well, if they don't have to have sex with only one person, what's to stop my wife right. from wanting right. to have sex with other people? There coming for me because my wife is not coming for me (laughs) (laughs) i made a tiktok about this but yeah it's like if you feel like the value of your marriage has gone down because like the label's being expanded Mm -hmm. then that tells me that your investment is in the label and is in your story about marriage and you because if your actual marriage was really great and you were like firm in monogamy and you were like this is clearly the best system for our relationship and we're Mm -hmm. thriving within it and it's wonderful why would you be concerned about there being polyamorous people in your street? It literally would not matter. I mean, it, it's like somewhat disingenuous when they're like, oh, we're so misunderstood. Everyone thinks that we practice polygamy, but we don't. Our founder just practiced it, and then the next leader, and then and it was like our <laughs> defining thing for like all these generations. And they said like, you might as well reject all of Mormonism if you're going to reject polygamy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> sure, you are not currently doing it in the mainstream LDS church. In, but... this, in the same way, because they are still doing it in a <clears throat> manner. But sometimes it just feels like a little bit of a straw man. Like, the reason everyone's persecuting us is because yeah. <laughs> they think we're polygamous. But it's like, you were. <laughs> and you don't take responsibility for that. Not at all. Um, and, and the also, Christian thing, such a double-edged sword. Like, on the one hand, it's like, yeah, probably better to focus on Jesus rather than Joseph Smith. As long as you're going to focus on the actual teachings of Jesus and not just this, like, corporate American gay-hating Jesus that y'all have conjured up in your mind... Because that side of general Christianity sucks big big time. (laughs) Yeah, right. We're not a cult. I guess that's subject to your thoughts, but based on what I... The bite model. Yeah, I know. I was going to say, based on what the cult experts are saying, kind of seems like it might be. Oh, you're not a cult? Would you kill yourself if the prophet asked you to? (laughs) Would you murder if he asked you to? Would you judge another person for not wearing their super sacred underwear that the church (laughs) orders you to wear? Does the church control what substances you're allowed to take into your body? Are you allowed to consume information that is critical of the church or are you told that doing that will lead you down into the gates of hell? Does the organization control your sexual life telling you who and when you're allowed to have sex? Are you told that if you have any doubts about the validity of the church's claims even when evidence suggests that they might be false that you should just doubt them and that you're a bad person if you give in to them thought terminating cliches what thought control no No, uh, come on no i'm just not allowed to read anything critical 
of these teachings and beliefs. And any science or history or archaeology or anything that is contradictory to my church's claims is just wrong. It's anti-Mormon anti literature. Mormon. It's from Satan. We cannot trust it, but we're not a cult. I've been wanting to do a list of things that are anti-Mormon, like mm. geology, that's anti-Mormon. Trying to disprove True. the flood, anti-Mormon. True. Zoology, uh, environmental biology, anti-Mormon, anti-Mormon. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to prove evolution, anti-Mormon. Yeah. The world is teeming with anti-Mormon. Absolutely. Okay, so there's this whole trend, I don't know if you've seen it, going around on TikTok where it's like, I am Mormon, but I struggle with. So let's just watch one of them. Okay. There are many. That one I, yeah, that correct. one I saved because I was like, we would agree. <laughs> but the gist of most of these, I am Mormon, but, which just the, the whole premise of like, I am Mormon, I am part of like the super special elite superior people on earth, but I still swear, you guys. <laughs> like that's the whole vibe. It still feels like it's, it's, it's kind of performative humility uh -huh. in the name of just reinforcing the superiority complex. Because it's like, you're not listing any, it's not like, I am Mormon, but I struggle with abortion sometimes. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's just like, Occasionally I cussing, want to buy a judging. <laughs> or the guy who was like, same sex attraction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless you. You know, I'm actually considering lining my own house walls with that like, spiky carpet. <laughs> <laughs> just for that familiar feeling. This one really blew up. People really resonated with this one. some doubts and toxicity. Yeah, but then I think in her, so there'll be a lot of things like this where um, Mormon people on Twitter will be kind of like seeking other Mormons who are maybe a bit less orthodox or are just having more doubts and just wanting to like empathize. But then they'll always have a caption that's like, um, don't want to hear from hateful exmos or it seems like they're still very like anti-ex-Mormons. Obviously some ex-Mormons can be hateful, I get that, but uh, there's always just like a bit of like a defense up of like, don't you dare speak to me if you're ex-Mormon, you yeah, know? Only want <clears throat> solidarity from other people who are questioning and haven't mm -hmm, left. Mm -hmm. I get it, we've been there. Yeah, we have. And, I, you know, that's a tough feeling. Has it all been for nothing? Yeah. It's like, well, I don't know. I think everything in your life doesn't... You can give things like meaning and things have turned you into who you are. Like nothing is necessarily ever... All for nothing, but I mean, but in, but the, in the very same breath. <laughs> oh God, I remember the prayer tough. where I was finally like, <clears throat> there is nobody listening to me, and just being like, this is all, all of it, fake. That's all of yeah. it. Oh, oh man, <laughs> it was really heavy. To feel that like five years of my life were fake was rough enough. Let alone feeling like your entire childhood, your entire family. Your I can't even imagine. I spent the best years of my life in Rexburg. Yeah. As you remind us every episode. This is a list of celebrities that I think should be LDS. I was immediately triggered when I started listening to this one because at BYU Idaho, and I'm sure just in Mormonism in general, people would always be like, Taylor Swift, yeah, she could, she's totally Mormon. She could totally be Mormon. Snoop Dogg, he was offered a book of Mormon, totally could be Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> but it would always just be these like white Americana people like Taylor Swift at the time like didn't wear bikinis for yeah. example and like didn't really sing about sex oh my god so wholesome they're just and she missing. was blonde you yeah. know just people that you like and you say again it's like the superiority complex mm. disclaimer I think all celebrities should be LDS because I think everyone should be LDS everyone yeah. Gay people. Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> <laughs> I think all people should be Mormon. It's just a heinous phrase to hear. Like, so triggering. So absurd. Celebrities specifically. Not all people. Let's not get carried away. She we don't want said the all celebrities <laughs> and all people should be Mormon. Oh, I like the Scientology approach of like, we're not trying to appeal to everyone. We only want people with money. <laughs> They'll be like, all people should be Mormon. But then it's like, the minute you go to an area that is like 95% Mormon, shit gets so fucking weird. The Mormons don't even like it. They acknowledge that it's fucked up. There's a difference between doctrine and culture, okay? It's just problematic when we get a bunch of Mormons together because they start acting out the doctrine. we're all living it. <laughs> but this list, it just, it would make sense. The first is Zoe Deschanel. I don't know if it's because of her character in New Girl, but 
If someone told me she was LDS, I would not be surprised. Remember in the early aughts when every Mormon girl was walking around with a ukulele yep. trying to be yep. his own Yes, I do. Yes, I do. It's just too easy. <laughs> and again, it's just like bubbly white girl who is like on, I don't know if it's an ABC show, but just the type of show that just portrays everything as like happy-go-lucky. But also it's like she had a lot of casual sex in that show. Next is the Kardashians. They have... Okay, the Kardashians I can totally see just because, <laughs> number one, they are super Christian. Also, they are like hyper obsessed with building like a dynasty, I swear. Like every new person the Kardashians date, they have kids with them so fast. Also, they all are very invested in prosperity gospel. They all truly believe that it is their purpose on this earth to be like as rich and famous as they are. And they truly believe that they are making the world a better place through their positive examples and through showing authenticity by talking on their show about how they have anxiety. Wow. Khloe Kardashian, I saw this TikTok recently. Khloe Kardashian was at dinner with Chelsea Handler and Khloe's, the Kardashians are doing this thing where they're just always trying to seem relatable now, right? Like they have anxiety. They talk about social media being a toxic culture. Wow, so she Khloe like me for real. <laughs> so Khloe Kardashian's going off about how social media is a toxic culture and then Chelsea Handler is just like, I wonder what famous family did that? <laughs> this is like, you literally created social media culture. Anyway, so what I'm saying is she's not crazy for thinking that the Kardashians have sort of a Mormon vibe to them because believing that they like deserve to have, you know, Billy, a, a massively disproportionate share of the world's resources because like they're such good vibes that God wants that for them. Can't have that midriff in Mormonism, no <clears throat> Yeah, that's sir. gonna need to change. A bunch of kids and you can't tell me Kris Jenner would not be the most amazing ministering sister. You're telling me you're gonna subjugate Kris Jenner to second class citizen, which is what would happen in Mormonism. You, can you imagine Kris Jenner not being able to have leadership positions? I can't. I don't really know, I know what's going on with Kris Jenner. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no, when it comes down to it, I can't. Next, I think Charlie Puth. I don't really know anything about him, but in this picture, I thought white and wholesome white and delightsome yes. literally everyone is white that she lists it, i guess the kardashians are armenian or part armenian but yeah it's just literally a bunch of like bubbly white people tom if tom holland doesn't make it in this i don't know because <clears throat> she did zoe deschanel and now reese witherspoon what are they bubbly white women this is reese witherspoon i think she would make a great relief society president and lastly is obviously the biebers i don't know why we haven't converted them yet <laughs> It's hard to imagine what could prevent the beavers from converting. <laughs> the beavers are very Christian. Um, but they're so the much kind so that I cannot listen to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but they're the type of Christian that is like, we do what we want, don't judge. I'd like an update on this one just to know how it went, how it's going. <laughs> it might have gone great, and if so, good for her. But I just think it's an interesting point in culture where the Mormons are just openly talking about being virgins to their wedding night on TikTok. I just don't think any amount of exposure is going to make me any more comfortable with any of it. <laughs> Ooh, ah. So, like, I wonder how long they waited, like, what, a few months? Yeah. Can I go on the rant that I went on earlier Please about how on. silly it is to make a religious standpoint about marriage being essential to have children. Because like, what is you marriage? Mean to have sex. To have sex, excuse me, thank you. Because it's, just, it's like saying, okay, the government has to approve of a relationship or else. Like, why does mm -hmm. the United States government have a say in whether or not I'm allowed to have physical intimacy because with Because you're allowed to have sex it, like in Mormonism, if you get married civilly, it's still then not a sin to have sex. Even though you are right. supposed to have a temple marriage. Right. It isn't like only if you get our Mormon temple marriage that you're allowed to have sex. It's literally just like if you are legally married. Yeah. And Mormons are <clears throat> the most, you know, absurd and intense about that also. But Christians are the same. Like you've got to be married to have... And it's like, why does the, the most powerful cartel in a, any geographical region have a say in whether or not I'm allowed, to, again, to have physical intimacy? Because at the end of the day, isn't like the sacredness of relationships about having that warmth and that connection and that, you know, the all of it is like mm -hmm. part of what makes being human so special. And it's not any more sacred because you have a paper signed by your local notary. Like that's not what makes physical intimacy sacred. 
And, and it all crazy. comes from the same people who are like, small government, the government is corrupt, can't trust with anything. And it's like, but the government gets to like decide when you have sex? Come uh. on. Bitch, I'm stylish. Black top, big t-shirt, Billy. Bitch, on my wrist, but I want... Is he the guy who struggles with same-sex attraction? It might be. I think it is. So, humble enough to know that the ch church itself is full of faults. Well done. Really proud of you. I'd love to know what faults he would actually be willing to list, though. Right. Confident enough to know that the doctrine of the church is perfect. Oh, and I think see this here, is buddy, just... we've got <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes confidence <laughs> is a real sign. If you're too confident about something, it's a real sign. I just think it's funny that you said the doctrine of the church is perfect because as we're always saying, like, list one single doctrine that has never changed. Even the Godhead itself has changed throughout Mormonism. Or one single problem with the church that's not informed by doctrine. Yes, watch my culture and be... Culture v. Doctrine video, I'll link it in the description It's like, box. yeah, it sucks when we, you know, give too much power to our leaders in front of us, but that's only because we have a doctrine saying that the leaders are always correct and that the person with the most keys always needs to deserve the acquiescence of everybody else and <laughs> they've been appointed by God in revelation and discernment. Mm -hmm. And then it'd be like, people are so judgy, but sex is the sin next to murder. So mm. like, of course you're going to be judgmental. If someone was murdering, I'd be like, oh, that's a bad thing. You shouldn't do that. That person seems a bit shit. Wow. So, like, how can you blame them when they find out someone in their ward gave a handy? <laughs> you gotta judge them. It's doctrinal. It's all on the way she moves. she do what she do. Did she read the parts in the CES letter about the Book of Mormon? I'm just like, you are simping so hard for like old men in this because it's, I mean, that's what she's been taught her whole life, right? It's just like, lean on the Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon's the cornerstone of the religion. <laughs> she wouldn't pound to like the Book of Abraham. <laughs> <laughs> also, everyone in the comments was just like, the CES letter is a hilarious joke at best. And I'm like, bitch, there's no way you have like thoroughly absorbed. You have not digested What is that. it? No, there's no way. <laughs> Because, you know, even tone aside, uh, minor discrepancies or nuances that are made aside, like, if one-fourth of that is legitimate, and it's very well-researched, it and it's been back and forth, like, that's crazy. Like, any other thing, mm -hmm. you would walk away from that so quick, <clears throat> but the fact that you've been indoctrinated since birth to believe that... Not only is that book true, but it's also good. <laughs> because yeah, I know. That's the biggest. You do not <laughs> think it's good. You do not think it's good. You just it's if you have a habit of like praying and reading the Book of Mormon, for example, every morning, you probably appreciate like the stillness, the fact that you're doing something that you've been taught to believe is the best thing you can do. And Getting you know, in touch with yourself potentially, as long as you're not gay, don't get too in touch with yourself. Sure, there's like a few verses that are like, oh yeah. Jesus, or whatever, they're like, mm, that hits hard. That's in every book. In you know every I mean? single book. Well, can, not except a, for Jack Whalen fiction. Lindsay Adams. <laughs> Ladies first, which yeah. we are sadly still doing on this channel. Yeah, Joseph Smith brought it harder than Liberty Adams did, that's for yeah, sure. You gotta give him something. But as far as literature goes, it's not that great. And there's a reason why people consider it a great challenge to be on top of reading scriptures <clears> and you're always tempted not to. Mm -hmm. It's like anything that you have to constantly reinforce. Course, yeah. As like you're you gotta do this every day or else you're gonna just totally slip up and fall off the deep end. It's like Yeah. Eh, if it was actually feeding you, you would do it because it feeds you. Yeah. I mean, although us with meditation. <laughs> These days I've been so good about I've been, I've been on top lately. of my routine. I'm like, this is so good, I love it. Once you're in it and it's like less of a yeah. Anyway. Doing it first thing in the morning has changed the game for me. Really? Because it was always so hard to like t once my day was in motion, mm. it was so hard to be like, I have to like stop and just do nothing. It's like I don't have time for that. But I just do it first thing in the morning. I don't have anything else. Brave. So I'm just like, shh. Brave. I think this is kind of just a thing right now. There's like a real demand for this type of like, th essentially this is like the take. that we've, The church has kind of got to the point where there is just so much evidence against it mm. that now the argument is just like, I just stay strong regardless. It doesn't bother mm. me because my testimony in the Book of Mormon is so strong. And it's like, it's you're not really giving anything substantial. I just think for a large percentage of people, because they've just been taught it enough throughout their lives, like fall back on the Book of Mormon, fall back on your testimony, that's just enough. It's so funny to hold up the Book of Mormon and <clears throat> been like, uh, how do I handle the, the document that gives me 1,000 ways the Book of Mormon isn't true? You're never going to guess. <laughs> The Book of Mormon. <laughs> it's like you might as well have like pulled out like Joseph Smith 
having sex with teenagers and mm-hmm. been like, how do I stay? Well, <laughs> like, how do- this guy right here. <laughs> how do I deal with all the negative Amazon reviews of my ebook? And then I just go over to my ebook. <laughs> okay. Nice. <laughs> I ignore it all. Turn it off. Yeah, Light that's lights. all you're Turn- saying. I just think it's interesting. I think it's interesting seeing a lot of Mormon creators be like, yeah, I know all the issues and I still choose to stay. And they, they think that they're showing some like, great display of faith which is obviously seen as noble and it, there's almost you know there's like a passive aggression to it a lot of the time but it's like all you're saying is just like oh my conditioning's too strong <laughs> we're gonna keep doing this for a bit longer so i i've been wanting to do something like this where you just switch some names around and be like um like you put the name of scientology for instance on it like be like hey did you know that the leader of scientology did this or how how would you know mm-hmm. that scientology was not true mm-hmm. uh if well, if the leader was doing really bad stuff, if it was proven <clears throat> that this or that weren't true, and it's like, okay, well, switch the Entire names around. Entire fields of science have just proved the book wrong. Archaeology, DNA science, metallurgy, what else? You name it, zoology. Like, history. Yeah. <laughs> zoology. If you're like me, you've probably had family, friends, people you follow on social media leave the LDS church, and you've probably asked yourself, why do I stay when so many people are leaving? Now I hope- I just think it's interesting all these videos of like, why do I stay? Cause it's clearly like, that's the question on Mormon's minds, which is like, wow, there is sure is a lot of evidence not to stay. And mm-hmm. ultimately 99% of the time, it's like you're staying because you're psychologically dependent on the organization. That's why mm-hmm. you're staying. So I always find it fascinating to see what arguments they're giving themselves, which are always arguments that are like informed by what leaders are telling them should be their arguments. Mm. You know, like it's all regurgitated. And you know, there's this idea about like, no one really thinks about what a cult actually is and what it entails uh-huh. because people think like, I couldn't possibly even be in a cult. I would recognize it. It would be terrible. They'd be doing like, more. What things. about reading a complete debunking <laughs> of your book of scripture and then being like, Still true to me though. Like, what what do you think a cult is? People, cults don't thrive. People, <clears throat> cults don't get members by doing horrible shit. They do it because they make they get members because they make you feel good. Like, mm-hmm. first and foremost, that's the first thing they do is open your eyes to a whole new world. And wow, I never felt this way. And whoa, the community is so kind mm-hmm. and loving. And then it's not till you get further and further in and close to the founders and see all the dysfunction there and how money's being handled and yada, yada, yada. That's what makes a cult. And when someone shows that to you, you're like, it couldn't be me. <clears throat> yeah, it's like if you're encountering evidence that is like backed by science that your church's truth claims are patently false and you're still choosing to stay, then you're psychologically dependent on that organization. And that, like, that's what high demands and religions and cults are about psychological dependency. Like, that's how you tell, mm. is if you can't think of anything that would make you leave the group, mm-hmm. which it's like, if you're reading the CES letter and that's not enough, then I'm like, what's it going to take? What would it take? And I think the biggest thing is just, I don't think, at least Mormons who make videos like that shallow, I just don't think they realize that like people in other Heidemann religions and cults, like they feel the same way about their group as you feel about yours. Cause it's mm-hmm. all the same mechanisms. Totally. It's not that yours is super special. Like the doctrines are really irrelevant. People are feeling that way in all of these groups. Oh yeah. Jehovah witnesses. Yeah. Them even more so. Yeah. <laughs> Probably the most faithful <laughs> of them. You don't feel ashamed if you have that question. I honestly think it's important to ask ourselves that question often. This is a question that I even ask myself on a regular basis just to check in and I wanted to talk about a few things that help me when I ask myself why do I stay in the LDS? She does have two American flags in the background which also feels like a little clue. It's like she likes a rigid ideology. Come on. (laughs) Faith. I always try to communicate my questions to somebody I trust and look up to and somebody I know who won't judge me for my questions. I am someone who loves lists and so I will make a pros and cons list of living the gospel. When I have a question, I will write it down and I will- That's kind of a tough one because I don't think you can really know all the pros and cons while you're in a high control group. Absolutely right? Not. Because all of your ideas about what it would be like to not be in the group anymore have been informed by the control of the group who have taught you like this is what life will be like outside what will you do it will be miserable you won't be <laughs> know how to raise your children you won't know how to have good morals blah 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 blah, blah. Uh, it's like cons list well i'll become an alcoholic and my <laughs> life will plunge into despair uh-huh. and rot and it's like mm-hmm. that's not actually how it goes down i mean i do appreciate that she said um well, number one, that she asks herself this often and that she thinks it's important to not feel ashamed. That that feels like progress, right, for Mormonism. Um, she mentioned talking your questions out with a trusted, like, did she say leader? 
Um, just a said, person you look up communicate to. Communicate your... Okay. Which I imagine would mean like someone in the church, right? It's not, yeah, like, it's yeah. not like you're going to go to like a therapist outside, outside the church no, that like specializes no. in high control grit, you know. A, a scholar of Mesoamerican the... studies. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go to them. <laughs> just a bit of an echo chamber. I know and firmly believe that anything worthwhile takes work. I know it can be overwhelming seeing people you love leave your faith, but strive to honestly find out for yourself why or why not you want to stay. Why or why not you want to stay? That wasn't, she didn't really answer why I stay. It was just kind of. No, she just was concept. like, here's how I sort of like process having that question. It's, it's not that any of her advice was particularly bad. I just think it's like the way that anyone within the group is going to take that information, take that advice is just going to be like, okay, you're going to go to your bishop and he's going to tell you all the normal stuff about mm. like why you shouldn't leave. And then like pray and study it out and write a list. It's like, okay, well, you're going to go to church sources. And so the, you're not going to find like a ton of information. It's mostly going to just like minimize your questions and they'll just be relegated back in your mind. And then what was the other one? Like constantly ask yourself why you stay. I mean, I can kind of see a situation where if you're writing the pros and cons list, again, because I don't think you have an accurate sense of what the pros and cons are, it's just going to be this like reinforcing thing that just keeps mm -hmm. you in the group. Right. So all of this probably is good uh, advice for people who want to stay in the group. Mm -hmm. I had so a she's doing what she wants. I had a conversation with a Mormon recently where he acknowledged like, you know, uh, no, a lot of things don't make sense. And for me, it's just more of like a practical thing mm -hmm. like I, I feel really good when I participate and it's and like so then what you feel and bad focuses, when you don't participate and you know he, he mentioned specifically his connection with Jesus like I just feel so good when I and it's like well have you ever tried worshipping Jesus in any other con context do you feel the exact same mm -hmm. have you ever tried worshipping a deity outside of Jesus mm -hmm. and how do you feel about that it's like you literally only have this experience and you could be having all those good experiences mm -hmm. without all the extremely bad reasons that people have presented <clears throat> for why staying in the church hurts. Yeah. But you don't know that if you've been right. conditioned your whole life to just see it in that way. And like the truth is like we are wired for the familiar. So actually that's probably what, you know, Mormons will always be like, I went to another church and it didn't feel the same. And it's like, yeah, it's not going to feel the same. Your brain's not wired to get dopamine from that in the same way. It's mm. not going to have the same impact. So even if someone did try to worship Jesus in other settings, it probably would feel a bit off and wrong. Like our feelings are not really a good guide in this situation because that's the whole name of the game is in high control groups. They hijack your feelings. Everything beautiful that's happened in your you know, family and all your beautiful experiences in life have been tied to this deity that they've taught you to believe in and this organization which represents the deity. Oh, it's wild. How so like good luck going based on your own feelings, all of which are the product of that conditioning. Totally. Sorry. You can even on. see that in like, uh, I remember being in non-member houses as a kid and being like, I just don't feel the same here because the aesthetics were different. <laughs> and I see like a predominantly Mormon aesthetic. And I'm like, this is a daki. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're a kid, it's just like it gets wide in your brain. Like this is like our in-group. Yeah. This is safety. Mm -hmm. So I guess what, what did we learn from Mormon TikTok? One thing I feel like I keep learning or just seeing is like how I mean obviously it, it's just a bigger and bigger deal all the time the question of like why am I staying in this thing <laughs> and like you know the evidence mounting against it uh -huh. it just seems like I mean even when we were in the church I feel like that was a big thing but now it just feels like so much of Mormonism and like the talks that you hear that people are giving is just all about like keeping people in Mormonism mm -hmm. just a big circle I thought those were just pretty what you'd expect yeah. yeah, I thought we might get more, like, substance. <clears throat> no. <laughs> no, Donna. Not really the strong point. All right, well, thank you guys for joining us for this. If you have any TikToks that you want us to react to in future videos, because, I mean, this could be an ongoing segment that we do, please send them to us on our... Is our handle on TikTok Zelf on the Shelf official? Unfortunately, I think it is. Our other account got banned. Unfairly. <laughs> Yeah, it's off on the shelf official. Yeah, so follow us on there and send us any stuff you want us to respond to. Thank you always to our patrons for supporting this channel. We couldn't do it without you. 
Uh, if you're not following us on Patreon, go take a hop and a mosey over there and see what it's all about. We've got an awesome series that we just finished, Adam's Story. You can binge from start to finish. It's, it's the story of incredible. Charlie's son. He has a porn addiction. He overcomes it, and it's beautiful. Absolutely powerful stuff. Yeah, can't wait for you to be a part of that. All right, thanks for watching. Love ya. Bye. Bye. Love you.